President Theodore Roosevelt described his foreign policy as go carefully and carry a big stick. And this is the modern day big stick as it is affectionately known to Americans. The US aircraft carrier named after the ex-president. More than 60 jets are launched from the Roosevelt's four runways every day. 30 technicians are on hand to make sure the takeoffs go smoothly. The jets are hydraulically catapulted into the skies, going from naught to 260 kilometers per hour in two seconds. Around 5,500 people are needed to keep the giant floating airport working. The length of the deck is almost 350 meters long. One of the floors below deck is the hangar. Down here, 30 fighter jets at a time can be serviced. After every flight, the jets are sent here to be ready for the next attack. Small faults are mended within an hour, and inside 15, even big problems are sorted, and the plane is ready to go again. There's no rest for the wicked. Planes take off and land around the clock. If needed, even at night time, the ship can accommodate two takeoffs and a landing at the same time. On their return, the pilots tell us the Taliban are continuing to resist. There's been some resistance. Uh, you never know when to expect it, so I tell my pilots that uh, just because you didn't get uh, shot at yesterday doesn't mean you won't today, so you've always got to be prepared. But uh, not as much resistance as I remember seeing in, in Desert Storm. The way our tactics work, uh, we are very much uh, high and above any any threat to us at all. So we're, our tactics are involved that we don't really uh, it is not a danger for our airplanes. Exact military locations are a closely guarded secret. It is apparent that the Americans are finding it increasingly difficult to find targets. More and more pilots returning, still fully laden with bombs. And under their breath, the pilots complain about the complex chain of command. They are restricted from bombing any targets they may see, and are made to get permission before every hit. Radar crews confirm the targets identified by the pilots. By the time the go-ahead has been given, as much as two days may have passed. The commander-in-chief of the USS Roosevelt explains the reasons. Well, our main concern here is collateral damage. We don't want to go killing innocent people or people that have already that have come over to our side. So it's better not to drop that ordinance when you don't, when when you're not sure. It's a real fluid situation out there right now. Uh, as they retreat, trying to figure out uh, where the good folks are and where the uh, where the uh, enemy is. Uh, when we find them, then uh, we're cleared to strike. When we don't, then we bring the ordnance back to the ship, save it for another day. While the bombs are being loaded, practicing Muslims pray for peace and a quick return home. Fifteen Muslims serve on the carrier, among them 21-year-old ship's electrician, Michael Davids. Anybody of any faith should have mixed emotions about, you know, innocent people dying, period. You know, that's always a bad thing. It's not, it's never a good thing to uh, have happen. The lack of space in the ship weighs on the mind. Crews are looking forward to getting home. Life aboard the ship is hard. They work shifts around the clock. Few even get to see daylight. There was no such thing as a day off, just a few well-earned hours. After six weeks of combat duty, most are exhausted. Uh, we work 12 more, maybe sometimes 14 hours sometimes. And it's very, we tired sometimes, but uh, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, it's kind of hard because we don't hit any ports or anything. So it's boring. And as for leisure activities, as much sleep as possible. The permanent drone of the ship's engines just doesn't affect the weary sailors anymore. Sleeping as much as I can. Is it possible to sleep here because it's so noisy? I couldn't sleep at all. You get used to it after a while. You can sleep. I can sleep through anything, so... The sleeping berths of the Marines are anything but comfortable. Between 30 to 50 people are crammed into a single cabin. There's no room for any tension. Any aggression has to be bottled up. A 
Aggression is reserved for America's public enemy number one, Osama bin Laden. Any frustration manifests itself in scrawled dedications on bombs. And every morning the crew climbs on deck to jet off and deliver their messages.